Yo, what's happening people? I'm Era from EraTheProducer.com and in this video, we need to talk about FL Studio 21. <laughs> so before we get into the update and some of the new features, I should first say that the version I'm using is the release candidate free. ImageLine have said that this will be the version that gets released as long as no major bugs are found, but they have also said that there could be a release candidate for. I recommend you download the release candidate so you can try it out for yourself and you don't need to worry about messing up your FL Studio 20 installation because these programs run fine alongside each other. So yeah, with all that said, let's take a look at some of the new features. The new browser features are probably one of my favourite additions, so we're going to go over them first. About halfway through this year, I switched from Ableton Live to FL Studio, and the first roadblock that I hit was the lack of a solid browser. In Ableton Live, it's as simple as going up to the search box and typing a phrase or keyword, and all of the samples that match it will appear. And although FL Studio 20 did have a search feature, I just felt a bit limited. The new browser in FL Studio 21 on the other hand is amazing. We now have the option to search for a keyword or phrase and all of the samples that contain that keyword in their name are going to show up. There are two other ways of quickly accessing your samples in FL Studio 21 and that's by using tags and favourites. We can now right click any sample in the browser and come down to the tags option to give it a pre-existing tag or you can also select the add tag option to give it a new one. These tags can then be accessed from the bottom of the screen and all of the samples you've given that specific tag to are going to show up. We now also have the option to favourite sounds by using the star icon that appears on the right of each sample. All of these samples are then going to be sent to the star tab where they can easily be accessed from any project. These browser features are all ones that are available in Ableton Live so I'm not really amazed by them but I can say that I'm happy that they've been added to FL Studio. A very small new feature but one that I think is going to be quite useful is the new file saving system. From the file menu you're now going to have the option to save to new project folder. You then just need to select a folder to save the project to and all of the audio files and other relevant information is going to be stored within it. This is going to come in useful when you're sending projects out to other producers for collaborations and it will also stop them annoying error messages when you've moved the sample from one folder to another. If this file saving workflow doesn't work for you then you've still got the option to save a regular FLP like you did before. The next new feature is one that I think a lot of people are excited by and it's the ability to add and edit your own themes. You can now create your own themes inside FL Studio and even download and import them. Each theme can then be controlled by using these knobs and this is going to allow you to control stuff like contrast and saturation. You can then edit these solid colours which is going to change things like sequencer steps and button colours. Working in a DAW means you'll often be staring at the same screen for a long time so having a theme that's nice and easy on the eye is very important. So with Christmas being just around the corner, the Patent Sounds team would like to announce Advent. From the 1st of December all the way through to Christmas, you'll be able to head over to the Patent Sounds store and download one free loop every day. These loops will only be around till the end of December, so make sure that you're checking out the store each day and claiming your free loops. All loops are 100% royalty free and we also included the stems and MIDI to every sample too. We'd love to hear anything that you make out of these loops, so tag us on Instagram at Patent Sounds and we'll be sure to repost it. Merry Christmas from the whole Patent Sounds team, now let's jump into the video. I think playlist editing in FL Studio 20 could sometimes get a bit complicated. Adding volume automation to multiple clips would leave my sessions looking messy, but with the new playlist editing features, that's going to be a thing of the past. Every sample that you add to the playlist can now be faded in, out, or cross-faded with another sample. Hovering over the sample, you'll see this semicircle appear, which is going to allow you to increase or lower the gain. And then coming to the top left or right of the sample is going to allow you to fade it in or out. Taking one sample and overlapping it with another is now going to allow you to manually crossfade straight from the playlist. Of course, there are going to still be times when volume automation is needed, but I think that this is a really nice feature to have for playlist editing. The next few things I want to talk about are the newly introduced plugins, the first one being the multiband delay plugin. This one's available in the producer edition and up, and as the name suggests, it's a delay plugin that's going to split the frequency range into 16 bands, allowing you to edit each of them individually. Not only can you control the delay settings, but you can also control the volume and pan into. Each one of these sections is going to represent one of the bands and you can see which frequency range each band is covering with the numbers at the bottom. Now I've only played around with this plugin for a little bit so I might be missing a few things but for me I'm going to be sticking with the Fruity Delay 3 as my go-to stock delay plugin. The Vintage Chorus is a plugin that's based after the Electro Harmonic Small Stone Phase Shifter. I did some research on this piece of hardware and the plugin looks absolutely nothing like it. 
By the looks of it, I just assumed that it was based on the June 6 chorus. This chorus has two modes that can be activated singly or together, and it also includes a delay module which could add some really nice textures to your chorus effect. We then have some modulation controls as well as a noise section to really give you samples that unique vintage sound. If you don't feel like messing around with these sliders and knobs, then you can head over to the preset section to browse through some of the preloaded presets. Another newly added plugin is the VFX sequencer and this plugin is available in the Fruity Edition and up. This one needs to be loaded up in the Patcher plugin and I'm going to be totally honest and just say that that shit confuses the life out of me so we're going to move on to the last plugin. The last new plugin that's been added to FL Studio 21 is the one that I'm probably going to use the most and that is the Luxverb. This algorithmic reverb is fully fleshed out with lots of controls that can be used to create some really cool reverb effects. We've got a lot of the controls you'd expect to see on a reverb plugin like decay, room size and some filter controls but what sets this plugin aside for me is the feedback section. In particular I'm talking about this pitch slider which is going to allow you to shift the tails of your reverb up or down by 12 semitones. We then have this envelope section which can modulate either the wetness of the reverb or the decay. We also have a sidechain feature which is going to allow you to route in a different audio waveform for the envelope to follow. So I'll just throw some audio into the playlist so you can hear how this reverb sounds. So yeah, those are some of the new features that are available in FL Studio 21. Let me know in the comments section whether or not you're excited for this release and which one of these new features are your favourite. I recently posted a poll asking whether or not I should switch to FL Studio 21 for my future uploads and the response was a solid yes. So unless I run into any major bugs then I'm going to be using FL Studio 21 for all of my future videos. If you enjoyed this video then do me a favour and hit that like button and if you're new to the channel then hit the subscribe button too. If you'd like to know how I make melodies using AI plugins and I'll leave a link to that video up here. Then I'll just leave a random video from the channel down here. Big shout out to anybody that made it all the way to the end of the video. I've been Era. Thanks for watching and I'll hopefully catch you all in the next one.